overcome or overcomer? What are you? Are you an overcomer or are you being overcome? Are you being overcome by the devil? Are you being overcome by yourself? Are you allowing yourself to overcome you spiritually? Are you letting the desires of your flesh overcome you that you miss out with God? Well, we're going to talk about that this morning in Revelation 3.21. You know, John the Revelator wrote, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. You know, John's telling us that the only ones that are going to sit down with Jesus are those that have overcome what? We're going to talk about what we have to overcome. We allow, today we live in a day and age where people are being overcome. The church has been overcome. The church is, for the most part, is backslidden, and they've gone back into the world, and they're more like the world than they are like the church. But yet, God says only those that overcome the flesh. When we allow ourselves to succumb to the flesh, to the desires of the flesh, I don't care what we call ourselves. I don't care what church role we have our name on. We're lost and undone without God. That's God's word, friend, whether you like it or not. You need to hear this. You better listen to it. You know, we live in a day and age when compromise and temptations have never been greater. A lot of today's Christians, they're lowering their standards to meet today's fast pace. We allow our standards to be lowered. Well, we just keep lowering. Your churches have done that. You know, they want you. They want you to come into the church. They want you to be part of the church. You know, so, you know, but, you know, they don't like this, so they got to lower it a little more. they got to lower it a little more. You know, we have churches today where we have uh, reprobate uh, uh, ministers that are out there teaching other ministers uh, that uh, we don't, you don't need to preach from up on the platform anymore behind the podium because it, it intimidates the people too much. It makes them feel too guilty. Friend, that's why we're there. We're there to hear the word of God. Friend, when I go to church, I want a man to preach from this holy book. I want him to preach straight from God's heart. And if I'm not living right, I want him to stamp all over my toes all over my life because I want to make heaven my home. You know, we're deceived. We live in a deceived day and age where people are being deceived by the groves, listening to their own uh, fleshly hearts and listening to someone else tell them and lead them like the Pied Piper on their way to hell. You know, uh, when a Christian compromises, they are forfeiting the overcoming power of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost in their lives. You know, when a Christian compromises, they're allowing the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost that overcoming power to be compromised in their lives. It doesn't have any effect on them anymore because they've lowered the standard. They, they're, they're trying to do it in their self. They're trying to make heaven their own way. You know, the Bible says if you try to get in any other way other than through the gate, which is Jesus Christ, says you come as a thief or a robber and you ain't going to get in, friend. That's all there is to it. Some people today feel it is impossible to keep the standard of holiness that Christ Church requires, so they lower the standard to fit their own desired lifestyle. You know, we can't, you know, we can't live up to what, the, what this book says anymore, because in this day and age, and we have a modern God, some churches say. My, our God, he allows us to go to the, to the bar and, and go to the, the dance halls and to, to all these uh, uh, brothel houses and things. And, uh, and he, he, he allows us to do that just as long as we call ourselves a Christian, just as long as we read the Bible, and we go to church, and we flip a coin in the plate occasionally. You know, a God, he'll accept us. Friend, he'll accept nothing but what is like his son. He, you know, when we stand before him in judgment, you know, he's not going to look at you and want to know what all you've done in your life as of good, all the good deeds you've done. He's going to want to see how much you allow the Holy Spirit to transform you into the image of his son. That's the bottom line, friend. Whether you like it or not, that's the truth. You know, are you overcome? Are you an overcomer? Are you being, the church is being overcome by the groves. You know, he's coming back for those that are overcomers. Those are the ones who are going to sit with him in that high place. You know, it's impossible to be an overcomer in the flesh. Flesh has to die. You know, Paul said he had to crucify this flesh daily. Because he knew that if he didn't crucify this flesh daily, it was going to crucify him. Flesh has to die. Flesh can't overcome flesh. You know, your flesh can't overcome your flesh. You know, your, your good desires and that can't overcome that evil wickedness of the flesh that's in you because the Bible says all men are, are evil continually. You know, that's what God's Word said today. He says, at our best, it says we're evil. You know, and you can't overcome flesh with flesh. You have to overcome flesh only with the power of the Holy Spirit and seeking after righteousness. 
That's the only way you can do it. Paul states in Galatians 2.20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And he said, in the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He said, I live. He said, I only live because of the Christ who gave me this power to live in him. He said, I'm crucified in Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But he said, I don't live for myself. I live for Christ. You know, Paul said, I'm an overcomer because I crucified the old man. The old man dies hard, but he's got to crucify. He's got to be crucified. The old man, the old nature has to die. We have this, where we think that just because we come to church and call ourselves a Christian, we can still do all these old things, but it can't be so. You know, you can't mix oil and water. You know, he, Jesus said, he said, you know, you'd be warm or cold. He said, I'd rather have you lukewarm. He said, I'd rather have you cold or hot. He said, if you lukewarm me, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. In other words, he said, I'm going to puke you out of my mouth. And that's kind of crude, but that's what he said. He said, I want you to be hot, burning hot, on fire, striving for that fire, that fervent heat of righteousness and holiness. Or he said, I want you to be dead cold. Because he said, if you, you're lukewarm, what do you mean? he doesn't want you to be cold and indifferent. He said, I'd rather, he said, it's going to be better for those that never knew and never, never really sought after righteousness than it is for those that are just plain church. That's what he's saying. So we need to be seeking after Christ with everything that's within us that we might please him. Jesus says, Jesus says you can make it. He said, because I made it. He lived here as man, not as a king. He came here as a likeness of common man in the flesh and lived here as a commoner. And he went through all types of trials and troubles and tribulations and tests. And he overcame the flesh and he made it. Jesus made it. Jesus said, uh, I made it so you can make it. Because I overcame the world before you. The scripture states in John 16, 33. He said, these things have I spoken unto you. That in me ye might have peace. You know, we don't have any peace. People are looking after all these things. You don't have any peace. That's what they're searching after all these things to fill that void that only God can give peace. He said, in the world ye shall have tribulations, but he said, but be of good cheer. He said, for I have overcome the world. He said, I've overcome it. He said, I've done it. He said, you can do it too. He said, you can do it easier than me because you have the Holy Spirit who I left behind to help you. He said, the Holy Spirit will help you to be that overcomer you need to be. You know, you can t continue to be an overcomer as long as they abide, as we abide in Christ. You know, Paul stated, it is no longer I, but Christ that dwelleth in me. You know, we're going to be an overcomer as long as we dwell in Christ. He said, Paul said, it's no longer I. It's not me. It's not the old flesh man that's being this overcomer, walking this life. But he said, it's the Christ that dwells within me that's making this walk. You know, hear me. You're only going to be an overcomer to the degree that Christ dwells within you. A little bit of Christ, a little bit of overcoming. A lot of Christ, you know, you're going to overcome more. And we're supposed to be in a forward motion, not in a backward, not in a still stagnant motion or standing still. We're supposed to be pro progressively going forward. You know, being an overcomer is proportional to the degree that you spend time in prayer and the Word and seeking after His righteousness. You know, if, if we're just we're spending more time on uh, the television, the computer, uh, doing all these sorts of things, and we're spending time with God, we're overcome, friend, and we don't even realize it. You know, we have to spend time and pray. We only carry our Bible to church underneath our arm. A lot of times, they don't even do that anymore. You know, we we, just, we look at it over on the jumbotron, over top of the, 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 the podium. But you know what? If we're not spending time in prayer, seeking after God and righteousness and in His Word and meditating upon Him, friend, we are overcome and we don't even know it. You know, sin. Sin is a Christian, uh, in a Christian's life is spelled what? Now, we got a little spelling lesson here. Sin. How do you spell sin? S-I-N. Okay, you know what? Okay, S. The S in sin represents S-E-L-F. Self. The S in sin represents self. Self is the person a Christian needs to overcome. You don't need to overcome anybody else. You don't need to overcome your wife, your husband, your neighbor, your uh, boss. You need to overcome self. 